you'll see with assistant managers, whenever a player has a complaint and the, the assistant managers, one of the assistant managers' jobs to a large degree is to go and see what the players, what, what the attitude of the players is like, how everyone's feeling. The players that are literally, say the players that have been out of, out of the 11, someone has been dropped maybe, someone has dropped a bit of form left out of the side and they, they, they want to get the feel of what, what's happening. When those players are upset and they try and, what they want to get some answers, the assistant manager very rarely, very, very rarely, there are some exceptions, will turn around and go, listen, you know, these are the reasons. You haven't performed at this level. We've, this is what you used to be really good. Most of them will say, listen, the manager's made his decision and that's it. You know, the manager's made the decision. I, 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 I'm not really sure. Or, you know, you need to speak to the manager about it. I, I, I can't answer that for you. And, and that's, that's the nature of it. You know, people will like, very, very few people will step up and be accountable for decisions or be prepared to, to be, put themselves in a position where they're, they're questioned about decisions that have been made. Um, you know, I, I've had a few. Uh, Paul Barron, who I had as a goalkeeping coach at, at Middlesbrough for about seven years, he was one of the few exceptions. That would be completely honest with you, tell you the situation. Um, I had up with Steve McLaren when Paul Barron rang me actually and said to me, listen, just to let you know, Steve McLaren is, a, you know, is, is, wants, wants to drop you from the side. And I've been telling him he's mad to. And, but, you know, I just want to let you know. And I said, yeah, right, okay, cool. And then when I confronted Steve McLaren about it, he said, no, I haven't made a decision. I'm, I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't decided anything. And I, and I didn't want to say, well, Paul Barron told me it because I know you did because you've told him and, you, and he's told me. I, I don't want to put him in there. But he can, he can put two and two together. It's not, it's not, it's not rocket science, right? But I'm not going to say it. Um, Mike Kelly is another one that I had at uh, Fulham. Says so it how it is. You know, you know exactly where you stand with him. You know, he either loves you or he hates you. He's Marmite. Marmite or Vegemite. Where's your point? Where are you coming from? He's either Vegemite or he's Marmite. So you right. either love it or you hate it. And that's how it is. And, and which one did you prefer? You preferred the honesty, obviously. Of uh, course, hundred yeah. percent. And then you know what? As, as difficult as honesty is to take at the heat of the moment, and even at the heat of the moment, if you disagree with it, it's more about I respect someone that at least had at least had the 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 goal to tell you. At least was strong enough, and they took an opinion, they stuck with it, and whether or not I agree with it or not, at least they had the balls to say it to you. And so many of them hide. So many of them don't have it. I had Nigel Pearson at, at Leicester. Didn't, could not tell me that he was going to drop me out of the team. And then two weeks later, he came to me and, and joking with me as if nothing happened, like we were best buddies, and put his arm around me. And that's when it exploded. And that's why I told him my peace of mind because I said to him, I know you, you know me, I've known you for a long, long time. And I go, I know you don't have, you don't tell your players when you leave, uh, put them inside and leave them out of the side. I said, but the problem I had with you is that you told me the week before, if I, it's up to me now to keep my position. If I play well, you'll keep your position. And if you don't, you come out. And I said to him, that's all I want. And then I, pl- I, and then I played the next game, I played well, and the very next game he drops me and doesn't put me back in again. So I said to him, did I play bad in the next game? He said, no. I said, did I play well? I guess yes. He said, yeah. answer that one for me. You've told me, if I play well, you're going to stay in. And if you don't, You'll come out. I played well, but you still took me out and you still didn't have the balls to tell me. And that's where I have a problem. If he then said to me, if he said to me, you know what? I know I told you last week, if you play well, you're going to keep your spot. However, I've changed my mind because this is what I need for my team. And I know you can't produce it as well as the other goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. And if he said to me, Cashman Michael can kick the ball further and you, he can turn the... The defence, he can, he, can, he can turn an attack from the opposition into an attack for us in a split second because his distribution, his ability to knock the ball 100 metres up the pitch, and you can't do that. And all the other sides of it where you're better than he is, I'm happy for that to be okay. I'm happy for still to play him because he makes up more, more for it in the ability of his distribution. I wouldn't have been happy, but I would have said, okay, I understand. But he didn't have the balls to tell me, and that was the problem. And most managers don't. And did you find yourself grappling as you got a bit older as well? But finding yourself, it's easier to, to speak like that to people? Like oh, yeah. Want, Gosh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, at that stage in my career, it's a lot, a lot easier when you're older. I mean, I, I had, at Middlesbrough, it happened in uh, 2006. So I was 32 years old. Um, it, it, it didn't, sorry, 30, 
34, was I 34? What was that? 2006, uh, 34 years old. And it was leading up to the World Cup. So it was a really big season for us, you know, 2005, 2006 season. So I came off the back of helping Australia qualify for the World Cup against Uruguay in November 2005. We had an amazing run in Europe, ended up getting to the Europa League, or the UEFA Cup final. Um, Steve McLaren was the manager, and it all came to a head in the, in, so the end of December, January of the 2005, 2006 season. And it, it was difficult because you're thinking World Cup's around the corner. And I already knew Gus Hedding was, was looking for a reason to leave me out of the team. So I knew I had to play and I had to play well. And I knew that Zoko wasn't playing. So if I'm playing, I'm already at an advantage so long as I'm playing well enough. And he was just looking. We went through a bit of a rough patch and I got criticised for not coming out and taking crosses. Then I got criticised for coming out and taking a cross or punching a ball that after about a minute after I punched it away, ended up we, scored, we, we considered a goal because we didn't deal with it. And I got blamed for everything. Every time the ball went to the back of the net, he looked, at, he looked at everything I did to try and point the finger at me. And that's what it became in the end. So, and I still believe that now in hindsight, and that's like we're talking, you know, we're talking, what is it, 14 years later. And so that was a difficult period of time. And even at that age, and because I suppose I was over my 30s, I, I, still, I still was able to, to confront him about it and say I just wasn't having it. And I put in a transfer request because he became such, he was just such a liar that I had enough of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with, with that, when I was at Leicester, it was pretty easy because I was at the stage in my career where I just went, you know what, I've made this huge change and uplift. I've moved away from my family. And, you know, it's two and a half hours away from home in one direction. And, you know, you can't commute that every day. Um, and I, I made a big sacrifice, you know. And, and off the basis of him telling me, you play well, you keep the spot. And he completely conned me in it, you know. And that was the hard bit to take. And, and it's not like I've had other decisions go against me when Gus told me that he was going to leave me out for the game against Croatia. I... Listen, I completely, I didn't agree with it. I can understand, I can understand he felt that, I don't know, like he, he still blamed me for the goal against Japan when we, we won 3-1 in the end. He, I think he blamed me for goals that we considered against Brazil. Don't ask me which one, but I think he blamed me for them. Or at least said I should have saved them. Not that, never said it to my face, but that was my feeling. There was, there was also an undercurrent. I think there was other people in the background also in his ears saying, oh, you've got to play Zolko, you've got to play Zolko. It's against Croatia, he's going to play unbelievable. But then if you look at it, analyse it, he was average in all the games leading up to it. He was average in all the friendly games. He played for about five games for AC Milan that season. And then he played in three out of the five friendly games leading up to the World Cup. And each game, he was shaky. And every time the ball went in the box for a cross, he was shaking on all of it. And I was just like, how can you play someone who clearly isn't in a good run of form because he hasn't played enough football, but you're going to play him in this game? when the emotions are even higher and it's the most important game in Australia's history. So you end up thinking, okay, and it's not the time at that time as well. And with Gus, it just wouldn't have worked. Didn't matter if you were right or not. He was never going to admit that you're right there and then. He admitted down the track and he admitted to me last year. So we're talking, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're talking, what is that? 13 years later, he admitted to me, but he wouldn't do it at the time. That's for sure. Interesting. Well, it happened though. At least thirteen or thirteen days after, or thirteen years later, at least the apology came. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it, it, it came. Yeah, of course. But it, it's more about justification and the way you felt and the way you saw it. So, you know, you some as the longer it goes on, you start to doubt yourself. You start to go, well, hang on, how have I seen it in a very biased way? Because it, it obviously. It obviously uh, has to do with me, you know, I'm in the middle of it. So there is an element of biasness to it. But then you kind of, I've always tried to be as neutral as possible and tried to put myself on the outer and look from the outside in and say, hang on, how was that? What did I do? How was I performing? Is that the right decision? And you get that justification down the track. What about when you were, when we were playing Croatia and you were watching and Kalach, of course, made some, some serious errors. What were you thinking at the time there? Were you thinking, hmm, have I proved my point? Or was I was just it- angry. I was angry that 
this could potentially end our time in the World Cup at something that I thought could have been avoided. Mm. Um, and listen, it's easy to say that in terms of, it's not, who's to say that I wouldn't have gone on there and made a mistake? You know, it, it, no one's immune to making mistakes, but the chances, the law of averages in terms of playing so many games throughout the season, playing at a good level, I mean, I, I, I thought particularly even once I got back in the team uh, late January after McLaren came back to me and said, oh, listen, I want you back in the team and everything else. And, and I ended up going, well, you're not going to let me go, so I have to go. And he said, well, no bids are coming for you. I said, they have, because I know I've spoken with the clubs. I know who they, who they are. I know what's happening. And you just don't want to let me go. It's all right. Anyway, so you know that, you, you know, so I'm looking at it from the outside going, I can't react because there are going to be cameras on me. There are going to be people who are going to interpret every, every sort of reaction I give on the bench. And then I thought, I need to be the furthest point away from the manager. So I was at the very end of the, 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 the bench, away from the manager, because I didn't want to see his reactions. I didn't want him to look at me and think, what does he think in his head right now? I want to be the furthest point away so he couldn't even see me. And I just thought, you've got to be as neutral as possible. Um, and a part of it was, it was the, the devastation, the angeriness, being angry and the devastation that we could potentially be out of the World Cup now off the back of this.